Hello everyone, I'm Kara Wanagatima. Welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. This is a show where we show you the business value of Azure and Office 365. I have an excellent guest today who's going to show you about some new capabilities. Laith, welcome. Thank you, Carwan. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> well, tell us. I know you have some new things to show us today. What are you going to show us? Today we will be talking about one of the absolute most requested feature on Microsoft Teams, so-called guest access. Uh, guest access. We've heard about that a lot in our feedback forums. And one of the things I want to point out is Microsoft's doing a great job of taking your feedback and implementing it in our products. So keep it coming. Uh, what Lace is going to show you today is a perfect example of that. That's right. I think it's a, one of the number one requested features. Yeah, isn't it? last time I saw there's 5,300 something request <laughs> on Microsoft Voice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, there's a lot. There's a lot on user voice out there. Lace, how long have you been with Microsoft? I've been with Microsoft for four to five years. I actually started at Microsoft Denmark oh. as a consultant and then I moved my way up all the way to Microsoft Teams. Absolutely. Welcome to the mothership. Thank you. <laughs> it's fun here. Denmark must have been lovely, though. It is. It is. It's great to be here, too. Oh, that's good. That's good. So tell us a little bit about guest access and, and what it means for people. Sure. So Microsoft Teams guest access will enable organization to collaborate with external partner outside of their uh, company, or in this case, Office 365 tenants. So you will be able to invite any partner or any vendor of yours using the email address of theirs and invite them to collaborate with you in within Microsoft Teams. Oh, I think I understand. So what you're saying is, Carawana at Microsoft.com can invite Sally at Dell.com or that something like that. Okay, yeah. so, sh so the person I invite doesn't have to have um, a user login on my system? So Microsoft Teams guest access rely on the Azure Active Directory business to business platform, ah. which facilitate the directory base, the authentication authorization base. So you as an IT admin doesn't really have to do a lot to facilitate uh, this feature to your end users. We know that our IT partners out there like to hear that. But they do have some control over it, right? They have controls over who can invite guests, what type of domains guests can be invited from, uh, whether if end users or team owners, in this case, are allowed to invite guest users to a team, uh, or it's a, a natively an IT admin tasks. So there is a lot of, there is lots of control we have built and made sure that our guest access story in Microsoft Team is coherent and it's well integrated with already uh, uh, settings and controls uh, of uh, controlling external access. That's excellent because, you know, security is an important part of Office 365 and our broader Microsoft 365 picture. So, obviously, everything that comes through Teams is built on top of that. So Absolutely. We, I know everyone out there appreciates that. And so, now, is this something that's going to cost extra? So, that's a great question. Microsoft Teams guest access is included as part of your Azure Active Directory or Office 365 subscription. So, uh, you can use the feature at no additional cost. However, guest access is uh, guest access users is subject to Office 365 and Azure Active Directory service limits. Mm. So one of the limits we have is that you can only have five uh, half a million security principles in the directory. Mm. So guest access will, of course, be uh, inheriting that kind of service limits. I see. But does that also relate to how many guests I can invite? So uh, as I mentioned, you have half a million objects you can have in the directory. Oh, so as long time as you don't exceed the service limits, you can have as many guests as you want. So okay. as an example, you are an organization of 2,000 users, you can have 2,000 guests, Right. not a problem. Right, right, that's going to be great. So, Because I do know that in certain industries, guest access is very prevalent. I think about marketing and advertising, even some things in healthcare, manufacturing. There's lots of places where you have external guests that you need to collaborate with. Correct. So, so that's great, and I, I, I love the fact, I think our customers will love the fact that it doesn't actually cost extra. That is There's correct. There's no additional licensing component there. Um, and so, you know, do, do you have to do anything from an IT admin perspective to turn this on? I mean, is this something that is just going to appear in the service? Yeah. So Microsoft Teams rely on uh, Office 365 groups as uh, its uh, platform infrastructure, mm -hmm. as well as Azure Active Directory business-to-business uh, -business, uh, platform. So both of, the, uh, both of the platforms are enabled by default. Ah. So IT admins and end users in this case can go ahead as soon as we light up the features in their tenant 
start inviting those guest users. Uh, however, uh, as part of our uh, deployment uh, cadence, we notify IT admins so they have a good period amount of time to change their mind or to tweak their settings as needed. Right, right. And this is also part of a series of technical readiness. You'll be able to find all of that in the places that you always find uh, practical guidance about Microsoft Teams on the Success with Teams site, uh, as well as other places across Microsoft Web Properties. So I have a feeling that we'll be able to give them lots of information about uh, what they need to do or not do uh, to enable this. That's excellent. Great. All this sounds so great. Will you show us how it works now? Absolutely, Carolyn. So great. I'm in Microsoft. Uh, teams, uh, the desktop app, uh, I will go ahead and add a member and the reason why I have the option is because I own this team. Ah, I see. Um, I will need uh, a logistic experts to help me with my art and media festival event that I will be having and uh, the person I will be inviting is, is Moscan. She is from uh, teamscontoso.com. So the first thing happens here is we will basically uh, make a directory lookup to make sure that this email address is not associated with my internal users. And as soon as I determine that, I will go ahead and identify the user as a guest. So as soon as I click on that, uh, I will get the option to modify the display name of my guest users. Because right now, um, this might not be identifiable enough uh, for other team members. So I will go ahead and specify Muskin's first and last name. and I will add her. So a couple of things happening here is that I'm actually provisioning Moscan in the Azure Active Directory. I see. So she is provisioned as a guest and she is also tagged with guest. Oh, that's great. So it's just, vi I'm visually able to see who's a guest and who isn't in my team. Exactly. And, and that's automatic from the back end of the system? That is absolutely automatic. Okay. So you will also notice if you will also notice a few other things that we have added. So as I added Moscan to my Graphic Design Institute team, in this case the Art and Media Festival channel, uh, other team members will immediately become aware of that now there is an external party, there is a guest user in my team. The first thing you will notice is there is this this team has a guest uh, banner. A second thing, there is a visual indicating there is a guest user in this team. If you happen to go through the uh, view team members table, you will see there is another banner indicating there are external uh, users uh, added to the team. You will see who they are and you will see their new uh, uh, role, which is a guest. I think that's really important because having those indicators in the team, don't you think that it helps people not overshare inadvertently? Absolutely. That's the intent of the indicators. And you know, as uh, our customers and partners and vendors start to leverage the tool, um, I will be more than happy to hear their feedback and to incorporate that as well. That's great. So That's if we great. go back to, um, to the channel in this case, and I will show you what actually have happened on Moscan's site. Oh, great. So what happened is Moscan have received an email letting her know that uh, in this case Leith added her to uh, as a guest to Teams FTW, that's the tenant name. I see. And she been added to the Graphic Design Institute team. Great. So what is happening behind the scenes is Moscan will basically click on the email to consent her access to, uh, to the new team she's been added to. That's one way of doing the process, but we also want people to be in Microsoft Teams all the time without even going to their email application. Of course. So I will pause this for a little bit and I will show you uh, that experience we call in-app redemption. What it basically means is that uh, this is uh, Moscan's home tenant. Uh -huh. She is in Contoso, and she is receiving a notification letting her know that she have now been added to Teams FTW tenant as a guest. So what you're saying is she doesn't have to see the notification in her email. If she's just sitting and working as t in Teams as a normal part of her day, she's also going to get another notification in the app? That is correct. Oh, that's great. That's great. And so I get to see that little badge there that tells me, hey, I've been invited somewhere. That is correct. Wonderful. So uh, I, will, I will walk you through the process. So what's, basic, what's basically is going to happen, uh, hopefully Moscan will click on her invite right. to start participating. We will make sure that she really wants to switch her account right. as she does that we will basically go, up, go back to the Azure Active Directory consent page. Okay. And uh, we will, of course, accept and consent our access to this new tenant. Right. And it will take around two seconds uh, for the process to complete. And 
she is now basically switching uh, context from her home tenant to um, uh, the uh, guest tenant. And um, after I confirm that I want to switch uh, my account from my home tenant, and uh, in this case, uh, I'm in to the uh, invitee tenant, mm -hmm. uh, I land it into the Art and Media Festival channel ah. uh, that and, and the Graphic Design Institute team to which where I've been invited. Wonderful. And you can see, as a guest, you know, I can go in and I can say, hello, I'm here to help, for example, and the, the point and you would see uh, Moskan has posted a message. She is um, clearly highlighted that she's a guest. Right. Uh, if somebody would go ahead and try to look her profile card, you can see uh, the guest um, the, the guest tag follows that. Uh, assume uh, Moskan want to go ahead and, and chat with, in this case, Leif, uh, myself. <laughs> she will go ahead and she can initiate that chat as well. And she can chat with you because you're in the team that she was invited to, right? That is a great question. So uh, Moskan, in this case, as a guest, she will only be able to look people up within the teams that she's been invited to. I see. I However, see. when it comes to chat, if she wants to chat with people outside the team's boundary, she have to know their uh, chat address or email address or SIP address I see. to initiate a chat with Another them. Another more detailed piece of information. She did, she can't just see everybody in the company exactly. as she searches there in chat. That is correct. That's great. So it sounds like the team acts as a bit of a boundary to her experience. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So if I go back to the teams, you know, I can go ahead and post messages. I can participate. Uh, in, in files, I can you know go ahead and, and leverage uh, the taps uh, that have been uh, already uh, configured. Right. And one caveat on the taps and apps: uh, as a guest user, I'm only allowed to leverage what already is configured. I see. I can't add or reconfigure a tab or an app. So one of the aspects that was top of mind uh, when we were working on guest access in Microsoft Teams was to ensure that uh, your deployment investments uh, of controlling guest users, external sharing, external access to your tenant are honored and respected. So as you see in the slide deck, we uh, have this authorization dependency model in Microsoft Teams. So the first thing we will look at is, does your Azure Active Directory allow guest users to enter your, your tenants? Uh -huh. can, uh, can end users uh, are, uh, or team owners, are they allowed to actually invite a guest user in the tenant? If that's not the case, you know, we, we, we basically drop the request at that level. That's if the IT admins have facilitated uh, you know, those uh, capabilities to team owners in this case, we will move on and then we will start start looking at the uh, workload specific uh, uh, guest or external settings that we rely on. So the easiest example to see here is SharePoint Online. Right. SharePoint Online have a set of settings and capabilities to control external sharing. Exactly. So what it means if external sharing is not allowed in SharePoint, you can still invite guest users to Microsoft Teams, but in this case, they won't be able to leverage any of the SharePoint capabilities that we have in Teams, such as files. I see. So we're actually maintaining that control at a workload level, uh, but then that user, that guest user, could have a chat with me or potentially attend a meeting. They just wouldn't be able to access the files in that team. That is absolutely correct. I love that. I love that. And I think that our IT admin audience and folks who are the change owners uh, in organizations will love that as well. So we've been talking about guest access, and you mentioned some IT admin controls. Can you show us what those look like? Absolutely, Carolyn. So we both have IT admin controls, but we also have added team owner specific controls. Uh -huh. So let me walk you through uh, those. Great. So as a team owner, I can go ahead and I can go and view my team. I can go into settings, and under settings, you will see this new section called guest permissions. So if I expand that, I can allow my guests to create and update channels, not teams, only channels. Okay. And I can also give them uh, permission to delete channels. Excellent. So this is the team uh, ownership, uh, or sorry, team owner uh, uh, settings or permissions that they can enforce on guest users. Okay. As an IT admin, uh, I can you know go ahead in, in my Office 365 admin center. And if uh, I go into the service settings, Microsoft Teams, here uh, you will be able to um, have guest guest user specific settings. So you know I can disable their audio video call on chat, or you know I can 
uh, deny them access to upload files and whatnot. We have also uh, one more, uh, or actually there are a few more, I just happen to have picked up my favorite ones. <laughs> so in Azure Active Directory under user settings, there are external users and that's back to what I mentioned as an IT admin. I can restrict users from uh, uh, inviting or I can allow them to invite. I can make the uh, guest addition process an IT admin uh, task only and those settings are all listed here under external users in Azure Active Directory. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I know that our uh, our audience and, and even folks like us here inside Microsoft, we want to be able to have those controls, not because we're trying to block people's collaboration experience, but we need to understand who has access to data within our organization. And I, I'm sure all of you feel the same in terms of being able to control that in a way that makes people sleep at night. We, we don't want to worry about who has access to what, so we love that that's built in there. Absolutely, and you can easily go ahead and you know see uh, which guest users has been added. Uh, you can easily go ahead and you know apply uh, logging and auditing on those to see what kind of actions they've been doing exactly. within your tenant or team. Exactly, and stay tuned for another episode on reporting in Microsoft Teams and our e-discovery features. Uh, we're rolling out new stuff all the time along with our partners in the Security and Compliance Center. So. Uh, we know that these things need to work together, so I think that'll be great. So you've shown us a lot of wonderful stuff. Now, here's the question that everyone's waiting for an answer to. When will this be available to our customers? I know, it's been a very... Uh, <laughs> uh, so we are targeting end of summer uh, this year. Uh, so hopefully uh, by then, you all of you get to have the feature light it up, try it, make use of it. If you happen to be under uh, restricted uh, compliance, um, you can go ahead and turn the feature off altogether. That's right. Of course, my hope is that you get to use it. And please, please, please keep your feedback flowing. It's super important to us that we design the feature in a way that suits your needs and requirements. That's excellent. Well, this was another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I want to thank my excellent guest, thank Leif, you. Uh, for sharing this new feature with us. You can always give us feedback in the comments below or over at our technical community, Microsoft Technical Communities, which is aka that MS Teams Tech Community. So we hope that you join us over there. Keep that feedback coming, as Lee said, and we'll see you soon.